Hi everyone, and well, ooh, this is number 156, 66, interesting, so I was just talking about, um, oh, looking 43 too, so this must be connected, I was just doing the, the episode about Route 66, mm, interesting, all right, hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, this is Dee Dee, and I'm going to be talking about a very interesting story time <laughs> a very very interesting story time um i'm gonna look something up while i'm talking because i want to get the day correct um actually i'm just gonna do that right quick when did the child care tax credit first payment child you know what i'm saying I want to get the exact day that this happened okay the 15th and that was supposed to be the wednesday right because we got ours on tuesday july 15th 20 yeah i thought it was the 14th um 21 okay I'm just making sure that this day was Wednesday. Okay, I'm sorry. We're going to get into it in a second. I just want to make sure that this day was Wednesday. Because this date is significant. Okay, so Thursday. Okay, so... Oh, snapping 10. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, uh, ooh, let's get into it, because it wasn't Wednesday, it was Tuesday. Okay, so, yeah, we ended up getting it two days earlier. Okay. All right, let's get into this story time, okay? This is this is a lot going on. Um, This is a lot going on. I'm trying to think if I should use some discretion, or if it really matters, um... In what way I should use discretion? Okay, let's just get into it. We'll just see how it goes. Okay. So, <laughs> at one, at some point in time, I'm going to talk about how we manifested a move to Phoenix. Okay. How we manifested a move to Phoenix has to do with a particular dream that I had on April the 24th, 2021. Um, it was either the 24th or the 25th. It was like the night of the new moon in Taurus, I believe. Um, but I ended up having a dream and it was a very specific dream because in 2021, well, really in 2020, about, yeah, the beginning of the year, 2020, before COVID and everything just went crazy, um, I had a feeling that we were going to be leaving New Orleans, okay? So, it took about until April 2021, it's about a year and some change now. I've been feeling we need to leave New Orleans for like eight years, but what I mean by saying January 2020 is that there was um, a very strong pull from the universe that it was going to be time to go soon. Um, so of course, you know, if you really pay attention in life, you get these strong feelings, right? And sometimes things manifest immediately. Sometimes it can be a year, sometimes it could be two years, but whenever you get this kind of ping, let's say, um, it's for you to start getting your affairs in order so that you can figure out what you're going to need, what you're going to do to try to make the transition as smooth as possible. So, <laughs> um, April 2021, I ended up having a dream about us leaving uh, New Orleans and that it was going to be time. And they told me exactly where it's supposed to go. And so pretty much in this dream, also, it was an air of keeping it to ourselves and just leaving. OK, it was very specific about that. Um, and it was very specific that if we started telling too many people, there could be a lot of energy in the way of us getting out and we might not actually be able to do it. But something about that particular time period, I remember them saying, and when I say them, I'm talking about a spiritual team because, you know, sometimes you get these 
inclinations and intuitions and you know or there's a spirit that's actually telling you what's going on and sometimes you don't get a clear visual of exactly who's talking to you um so that's what I'm saying they <laughs> um so I wasn't exactly sure who exactly at that time because uh you know just we usually have a lot of different energies around family members all type of people around um and you know most of the time it's not exactly um paramount I would say uh to know exactly who's talking to you uh so anyways but I trusted the information and the guidance right so so they're like it's time to get out don't say anything because there could be a lot of backlash a lot of different things and it will make it difficult for you to get out as smooth as possible because I knew that there was a two-year cycle that was going on it was either it was like a two-year cycle but there was also like a bigger kind of like nine-year cycle and they're like this is a really really important time um to get out because if you don't get out now you're gonna miss the window and pretty much what I was told is that you've got a six month time frame of getting out right now at this time Ray and I didn't have a whole lot of money to get out and we weren't nec- like we were definitely talking about leaving um I guess like more seriously but it wasn't a solidified plan so I was like I don't know how we're gonna do that okay so um during this <laughs> series of dreams <laughs> This is so funny. It wasn't funny at the time because I was like, what? But during the series of dreams, <laughs> I was made aware. And I'm going to wait till I do like the actual story time to really go into detail about it. Because it's it's like a really, really interesting way that everything happened. Um, but during this series of dreams, I was made aware that I was going to be having a child. Now, at the time, I didn't know. Look, 24K, 24 again. Interesting. Um, At the time, I I did not know that they're actually literally talking about an actual baby. I was like, oh, um, I might be having a new project or blah, 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 blah. No, it was the baby. Okay. And that's significant to the story because um, I ended up finding out that I was pregnant on July 9th. (laughs) I ended up finding out I was pregnant on July 9th. Okay. So, let's get into story time, and it's going to make sense when we talk about it. So, this week in July was very active, okay? Um, <laughs> this week in July was super, super active, just as far as just a whole lot of information coming in, things like that. And so, one of the things I was told during that week, so the prior week, during the week I found out I was pregnant... Um, was that I needed to go to the Tempe Library on that Tuesday, which would be July 13th. On that Tuesday, I needed to go to the library and be there for 10 o'clock because I was going to be meeting someone. I kid you not. That's exactly what what the guidance was. And so I sat with it because it came through like in a very random time period. I didn't, uh, you know, I don't think I was doing anything specifically except for just like thinking about what we're going to do with like a fifth child because I did not know that the dream was talking about that I literally was going to be leaving New Orleans pregnant. Like I, I did. It's a whole story. So anyway, so I was grappling with that. You know, just was like, what? I didn't expect to go to Phoenix (laughs) and spend the first year there pregnant. Now, of course, we've had Phoenix (laughs) Uh, since then, which is a whole a whole thing. We did not name Phoenix after Phoenix is a whole thing. Um, I didn't expect the first year to be pregnancy and recovery. Uh, That's not what I was expecting at all. Um, but it's cool. We've had Phoenix and love him and couldn't, you know, uh, not that I was like upset or anything about being pregnant. I was just shocked because the dream had like come true and I was not expecting that timeline of it because I didn't actually know that I was going to be having a child actually. So anyways, okay. So anyways, so it was during the time period where I was doing something, but it like, I wasn't like deep in meditation and got this. Like it was just like randomly, like, I think it was like walking around Whole Foods 
and I just randomly got that like um go to Tempe Library <laughs> go to Tempe Library uh and um and be there uh for 10 o'clock so I was like okay cool so they're even like write it down so I wrote it down <sighs> I wish I still had those notes. It's so crazy that I don't have those notes um, anymore. But they're like, go, blah, 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 right? So I'm like, okay, cool. So so on this day, it's Tuesday, and I went to the library. Now, this is when we just got there, okay? So we got there on our seven-year anniversary, which is June 29th. Okay, we got there on our seven year anniversary, got here to Arizona. I'm saying there because we're not still in Tempe. Um, And I had only been to the Tempe library once. Okay, so this is all within like the first two weeks of us being in Arizona. So I did not know really the Tempe library like that or where it was, um, except that I had been there one time because the housing um, place is there and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I ended up going there and I sat in the car and I was like, I must be nuts because, (laughs) because why am I sitting here in this parking lot? I'm like, I don't know if I'm supposed to go in. I don't know if I'm supposed to stay in the car. Like, where am I supposed to even meet this person? So I kid you not. So it was like 930 a.m. when I was saying this. The next thing I I kid you not, 945 a.m., we ended up getting the child tax care credit payment, which was supposed to come in on that Thursday, I guess. Um, but we ended up getting it that Tuesday at 945, something like that. You know, don't quote me on the exact number, but it was in the nine hour and it was towards the end of it. Um, but I'm just going to say 945. We ended up getting um, the first child care tax credit payment to um, cash up. And so I was like, what? So by this time, I'm in a good mood because... Um, you know, we're living in hotels and stuff like that. I didn't know what we're going to be doing. And so I was glad that we had some type of money to help out with the expenses with the kids and stuff because we really needed it. So I called Brad and I'm like, yay, we got the money and blah, 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 and stuff like that. And we're like really happy and stuff like that. So I was like in a really good mood. Okay. So by this time I'm like excited. So I'm like, okay, we can go buy some food right quick. (laughs) We can pay for the hotel. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was excited and then I was still unsure. So in my mind, I was like, okay, is that what I was supposed to be coming to? I was like, I'm sure that's not what it, I was coming to the library for because they said that I was meeting someone. So it's about 9.50 and I'm still unsure about what to do. So then, um, and I don't know if it was because I just found out I was pregnant. So this is like four days after I found out I was pregnant. Um, I'm like, let me go in and use the bathroom. So I go in the this is so funny. I go, <laughs> I go in to use the bathroom. As I'm coming out of the bathroom, there is the man that I come out of the bathroom with at the same exact time. I kid you not, y'all. And I looked at him and I was like, is this the person I'm supposed to be meeting? And I was like, okay, if this is the person I'm supposed to be meeting, you have him talk to me because you're having us meet in the strangest way possible like the weirdest way possible now i'm not gonna i'm not gonna blame it on them because we probably could have met each other in a different way if i would have got out of the car and like just roamed around the library i guess um so i'm not gonna blame it all on them (laughs) because i was actually going to use the bathroom i was about to leave anyway so i'm like okay this is awkward i can't look i kid you not this is like the story of dd's life So we're leaving the bathroom and I let him walk in front of me because, you know, now that I found out I'm pregnant, I'm just tired. And I think that I was already tired. But, you know, when you have four toddlers and just made this big old move during the middle of a pandemic, you're starting a whole life, you know, uh, tired is just tired is just tired. So I was like, you know, I don't feel like walking too fast. So I'm gonna just let this guy go because he seemed like not necessarily he was in a rush, but um, he seemed like he was just walking faster than me. So as we're going, because where the library is and the Tempe library, it is very close to the door. And so um, uh, now these doors, you don't have to pull open. But I think just when you're a gentleman 
and there is a woman walking behind you um uh I've noticed that sometimes men will just turn around to make sure that like you know I made it out of the doors okay you know because when you're dealing with you know sensor activated doors um you can you know if you move too fast the doors could start closing on someone right so that's what he did so he turned around and as he turned around he was like how are you doing today <laughs> and by this time I'm like okay this must be the guy I'm supposed to be meeting because he was just like how are you doing today and I'm like I'm doing pretty good you know how are you so we started up this conversation and we paused outside of temple library now this is during the middle of summer so it is hot okay hot 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 okay so um we start just you know doing small talk and stuff like that um he was like you know this is a good day for me i'm just coming here for you know blah 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 and stuff and he was like um how long you been in arizona and that's when it solidified to me that i was supposed to be talking to him now i probably look like i stuck out like i wasn't really from arizona but you know um everybody who does you know who doesn't think you're from arizona doesn't necessarily set up a conversation with that so i let him know that i was from new orleans and so when i told him that he told me that he had had a very strange feeling about new orleans like there was going to be another major hurricane that was going to put the city underwater in which I responded to him that I had had a very similar dream of that happening in 2018 now when I mentioned the dream that's when the conversation started getting deeper because I'm guessing he's realizing like oh she has prophetic dreams and that's probably the reason that I even mentioned New Orleans to her now I'm trying to think about it because I think that he actually I might have just told him because I don't think that I actually told him I was from New Orleans before he said that. I think he asked me, like, how long have you been in Arizona? And I told him, like, oh, about, you know, two weeks now. And um, and I think that he just randomly said, you know, what I've been thinking about is New Orleans. I really think that that's how it happened because he said so many things to me. And I was like, does this guy know me? Because... <laughs> because it's kind of strange I think that he actually just randomly started start talking about New Orleans um I want to say that that's how it was um so anyway so we're talking about New Orleans and then he starts talking to me about parallel lives I kid you not like I, I'm not even making it up he started talking to me about parallel lives and parallel versions of ourselves and so I'm following him because, you know, he's talking about, you know, you exist in different times and spaces and realities and things like that. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I want you to know that if Kobe Bryant comes back from uh, the dead, then you know that reality has really shifted. And that really took me off guard because um, Kobe Bryant, you know, had passed away, you know, uh, in 2020. But I was definitely having some dreams about him. And so um, I'm going to go into that in a different one. But I had also had the feeling that he was going to uh, be a part of a major Mandela effect. Now, when that Mandela effect happens, child, I <laughs> like I told my cousin, I'm like, I'm about to get my spaceship, me, my kids, my husband, like some of my, you know, friends, family and stuff. And we're out of here because I'm not playing with this reality. Like, I don't know. And literally, I was talking to him and I was like, I've had the same feeling, but I'm like, he is such a big time star. I just don't know how they would pull that up. And he literally, I I kid you not, you guys, he literally told me, he was like, oh, he's already come back twice in my reality. I'm like, what? He was like, yeah. And he was like, he hasn't come back once yet in your reality. And I was like, no. And he was like, oh, yeah, it's coming. He's come back twice in my reality already. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Then he started telling me some things about Meghan McCain. And he started talking about a whole bunch of other stuff. And I was like, whoa. So I understood why I was supposed to <laughs> meet him. Because, of course, you get into QHHT or you just pay attention to Mandela effects and stuff like that. Um, the world is a lot stranger than we think that it is. So I was like, okay, he's coming to verify to me that these things are actually occurring in my reality. Um, and I'm talking to someone that has, is predicting a Mandela effect, right? 
And for him, it's actually not predicting it because it has already happened twice in his reality. So I'm talking to someone that is predicting a Mandela effect for me in my reality because he has already experienced the Mandela effect twice in his reality. And he was like, yeah, and there's a lot of um, turds, you know, in the government or whatever, and we are going to figure out what, how to help out the American people. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Okay, interesting. You know, I'm I'm down for helping the American people. Now, this is where it gets interesting. <laughs> if it's not already interesting, right? But, you know what I'm saying? Mandela effects, stuff like that, parallel lives, things like that. Like, I, I have a an experience with and so I was like okay interesting like it was definitely mind-blowing but I was like interesting so I started talking to him some more and he's telling me he was like yeah um because uh, I'm al Qadir." and when he said that I didn't know who al Qadir was really consciously okay so I'm gonna get to al Qadir had been in the air in a second but he was like yeah I'm al Qadir," and I was like you're who and he was like al Qadir. And I was like, okay, um, I don't know really who that is. But um, he was like, yeah, it doesn't even really matter. But um, he was like, um, one thing, uh, what did he say? He was like, one thing is that I'm going to make sure. uh, Oh, this. Oh, my gosh. This is what he said. Um, He told (laughs) you guys. (laughs) He told me that um, he started telling me that he was Al Qadir. And that he had been on the earth a very, very long time. Okay. And so I was like, oh, okay. You know, and like I said, like with QHHT and just dream time and spiritual awakening and stuff like that, you hear a lot of interesting stuff. So it's not the first time I've heard someone tell me that they are the, you know, embodiment of something, right? Because we've had people that have said that they are Jesus reincarnate, that they are Mary Magdalene reincarnate and stuff like that. And then uh, some people are actually some of these energies reincarnated. That's the thing. Um, you know, whether they're a soul stream essence or whatever they are in some type of way, um, they are connected to that stream. Some people might be the literal embodiment um, of those energies. Some people might be a fractal of it. It, you know, it gets complicated and complex. I got to turn this car on because it's getting hot. It, it's really only Arizona where it's 60 degrees outside, y'all, and it's still hot. I'm still sweating. Oh, goodness grief. Okay. Okay, so anyways, he started telling me um, that as Al-Qadir, that he was a vessel for Al-Qadir, and he started telling me that um, he had sired, I kid you not, he told me he had sired 800 children in the astrals on January 26, 2020. Now, (laughs) Now, what was going on in my reality, January 26, 2020, um was very interesting in certain ways was definitely linked to some type of experience like this okay but I had diverted that experience so I I know I'm like saying in a very strange way and I just don't feel like getting into that part of the story right now that's like a whole nother story for a whole nother day um but there was an experience I had that was linked to something similar to what he was talking about about seeing Um, or sensing energies that were trying to give children we'll say it like that that were trying to give children okay and specifically on the day he said January 26th now he couldn't remember if it was January 26th or the 28th and I was like oh yeah it's probably definitely the 26th okay so January 26th 2020 we were still me Ray and the family we were still in New Orleans so by the next year I'm out in Arizona And I'm talking to a man in Tempe about his experience the previous year. So when I had this conversation with him, I realized and I was like, oh, us moving to Arizona is a really big thing. Because if we would have stayed in New Orleans, I would not have met him on that day and have heard his, you know, expression of that on that day. Right. So like I said, I didn't know who Al-Qadir was. um, And I think they call him Hadir. Uh, I think it's like more of an H pronunciation, Hadir. Um, but I'm going to keep saying Kadir right now. But anyways, um, and so I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, yeah, um, they keep trying to have me have a uh, sire all of these uh, new 
spirits and and babies and so um he was letting me know that that's what happened to him on that night so I was like whoa that's uh that's crazy um and so I started wrapping up the conversation after not too long after that not because I was freaked out or anything but I was getting hot and I was tired and I was ready to go home my feet were starting to hurt so I was like um you know wrapping up the conversation like okay interesting and so um, then he gave me a hug, okay? Then he gave me a hug, and he immediately knew that I was pregnant. He literally jumped back and was like, is that one of my babies in there? I kid you not. Now, by this point, the only person, well, only two people. I have one friend and my husband are the only two people I had told that I was pregnant at the time. Nobody else knew that I was pregnant. And I was only nine weeks, And he didn't say it immediately. He said it right after he hugged me and he jumped back and he was like, is that one of my babies in there? And I was like, no, I don't think so, because I didn't conceive him around that time. Um, (laughs) And I was like, "Uh, my husband and no, but my okay, you know, but I, I have heard very strange things. So I was just like, nope. And he was like, well, um. Well, I know that I will be providing for all of the babies or something like that um, within 18 months. Now, the interesting thing, (laughs) the interesting thing is that within 18 months, we were able to finally move out of the hotel um, and we did get um, a little bit of money to get out of the hotel which I thought that that was pretty interesting <laughs> and so going back to what I was talking about with Al Kadir so <laughs> like the end of 2019 going into 2020 um my friend I was saying that I knew that I was pregnant um she had been telling me about Al Kadir like you know uh, like uh, I think it was probably a year. It could have been closer to that. But me and this friend, we talk about so many things that, child, I don't even know. It could have been sooner than that. But I definitely remember there was a time like late 2019, 2020, that we were we were talking about Al-Qadir in connection, I think, with Mothman. And for some reason, I remember being like, you're talking to me about this Mothman and stuff like that. But for some reason, I just can't grasp it like do you know what I mean when somebody is telling you something and like they're consistently telling it to you but you just like you just can't grasp it like you just can't hold on to it for some reason like it's just hard to hold on to it now the funny thing is like this experience um it ended up coming around and I think that was probably purposely so that when he did come around I wouldn't over focus about him in this connection to Al Qadir, that I would focus more on what he was telling me than who he was. Um, and then I ended up also having a very um, interesting experience with Mothman as well. Um, and so, like I said, I had heard of Al Qadir, but it was something that was like very in the back of my mind. Oh, look, 838. Wow. And that says CFG, like CG, and it says 838. Interesting. Every time I see eight three, I think about in six one six. Oh, it's ten twenty seven. Interesting. Um, I think about uh, you know, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and there's Universe six one six and Universe eight three eight. Oh, so I guess there's six one six seven two seven and eight three eight let me see is there a seven two seven because that is super significant i'm about to pass out if there's a universe seven two seven i'm going to literally pass out i'm gonna tell you why if there is one. <laughs> oh my gosh earth seven two seven in the marvel database status existing The first episode was July 2016. Wow. Civil War II choosing two sides. What is it about? In this reality, James Rhodes, interesting, became the mayor of Philadelphia after returning to his hometown from military service. It's talking about Civil War II. Okay, let me see if there's something else that talks about... Who is this? 
oh fan fiction i guess on a freeway overpass overlooking the river a large armed armored convoy comes to a screeching stop three men in black suits exit the front vehicle to investigate the case of pileup as the other motorists begin honking i think this is a fan fiction thing I'm trying to see if there's a um, Universe 727 Marvel. Yeah, let's see. Well, I'm trying to see if there's more information. James Rhodes. And I know Rhodes is supposed to be the Island of Angels. Um, American Mayor of Philadelphia. Oh, former Mayor of Philadelphia. Seemingly abilities, seemingly those of... The James Rhodes of Earth Six. Woo! <laughs> Woo! It must be true. Mm. Um. Okay. So who is James Rhodes of Six One Six? Let's see. Oh. Okay. Hold on. James Rupert Jim Rhodes. Current alias is War Machine. Hmm mother and father okay what's his story though while Rhodes had the war where his body was covered in several mandalas mm. but these are not noticeable while he was clothed he was formerly scarred huh. human former cyborg hmm Briefly turned into a semi death loc. What is that? Okay. Learned aviation engineering in the U.S. Marines. Interesting, because I saw earlier today, I saw a car with CYA on it, which is a whole other story. And then I saw, um, the U.S. Marine Corps uh, logo on the back of someone's car. Interesting. Ooh, Iron Man in February 1983. I'm going to definitely go look that up. That's really significant. Okay, I'm going to check that out on my own time. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's ten thirty one to Halloween vibes. Okay. So anyways, anyways, um so every time I see that I think about Marvel Universe. Um so Yeah, um and if you haven't heard of Al Qadir, he is a prophet in the Muslim tradition who is supposed to have taught Moses, I believe. Oh, which is interesting because I was just talking about, mm, okay, I'm going to go do some research and we'll talk about that later. But anyways, and some people say that he's still walking around the earth. And um, if this guy was Al-Qadir then, or a vessel of Al-Qadir, um, I can definitely say that he is interacting with people through bodies. Definitely. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, that was the time that I met uh, Al Qadir. <laughs> and he told me that, you know, it's so weird because um, he told me that he had seen. Now, this is so crazy. Now, this man could have a extensive, you know, uh, you know, knowledge of New Orleans that I don't know about. That's a possibility. I don't know. But he literally told me, he was like, you know, I've seen you before. And he said that. He was like, I've seen you before. And I was like, oh, really? You know, I'm not going to freak out. I'm just like, okay, cool. Where have we seen each other before? And he was like, um, I've seen you when you were two, and I've seen you when you were 20. He was like, in both times, I have met you on Canal Street. And I was like, what? <laughs> now, the reason that... I feel like it's something a little bit different versus him just having this extensive knowledge of Canal Street and New Orleans is because when I told him I was from New Orleans, um, after he told me about the hurricane feeling, 
he didn't tell me that he used to live there that you know oh I lived in New Orleans for a couple of months or I lived there for a couple of years so he didn't show any type of way that he now not to say that he might not have and he just didn't find it necessary to say at that moment or you know didn't want to like talk over me or something like that um or couldn't find the right time to say that I mean that's also a possibility but he was like I've seen you twice two and twenty on Canal Street and by that point I was like this is wild <laughs> this is wild so I'm gonna read you a little bit about Al Qadir and then I'm gonna go ahead and get myself on a boffa here okay um I'm definitely gonna go read that 1983 edition okay let me tell you about Khadir okay Okay, so it says Al Qadir, I'm going to call him Qadir, is a figure not mentioned by name in the Quran. He is described in Surah Al Kaf as a righteous servant of God possessing great wisdom or mystic knowledge. In various Islamic and non Islamic traditions, Qadir is described as an angel, prophet, or wali. Who guards the sea, teaches secret knowledge, and aids those in distress. He prominently figures as a patron of the Islamic saint Ibn Arabi. The figure of Hadir has been synchronized over time with various other figures, including things that I don't know how to pronounce. Um, Dora Osa. Ooh. And then Sarush, I don't know, um, Sargus the General, and St. George. Oh, interesting. In Asia Minor, Samuel, mm, the Divine Persecutor, Elijah among the Druze. Are those the Druids? Who are the Druze? Darzi, who called themselves the Monotheist or Unitarians on Arab and Arabic speaking esoteric ethno-religious group from Western Asia who adhere to the Druze faith. Mm. Do not pers- permit outsiders to convert to their religion. Marry out- marriage outside the Druze faith is rare and strongly discouraged. Mm. Okay. Um, John the Baptist in Armenia and Jahulal, ooh, okay, Jahulal. Hold on, wait. Did I prick on the right thing? Okay. Hazrat Saeed Usman Marwandi, popularly known as Lal Shabazz Kalandar, like calendar, was a Sufi saint and poet of present-day Pakistan and Afghanistan. Wow, that's very interesting. Um, born, but where is the Kulal Jahal name? Oh, okay. So, Tomb of Lal Shabazz Kalandar, also known as Jalal Kalandar. Oh, ruby colored. Mm. Okay, but where is the... Oh, he is sometimes called... Juhulal, J H U L E L A L. And the term means the red bridegroom. Interesting. There are various legends why he was called this. Um, one of them says because he was promised marriage to a daughter of his friend, but the friend died, and later his friend's son refused to allow the agreed upon marriage, which caused. Shabazz grief. Okay. Very interesting. A contemporary of Rumi. Interesting. He traveled around the Muslim world and settled in Sawan, where he was eventually buried. Very interesting. Hmm. Okay. Um. So, yeah, that's a little bit about... <laughs> That's a little bit about Al Qadir or Hadir. I think that I'm pretty sure that's how they pronounce it. Hadir. Um, 
so yeah friends um i'm gonna go ahead and um get the rest of my day started unless i decide to do another one because i kind of feel like i want to do one more but we'll see but make sure that you like comment subscribe share share with a friend heavy on the commenting um and i will be back a little bit later i won't i'm probably just gonna post a little bit later maybe i'm not even sure when but subscribe okay bye <laughs> goodbye